Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode three of Bottoms Up. I'm so glad you're having a good time with this, because Lord knows I am. Nico, are you having a good time? He came to say hi. Nico, are you having a good time with Bottoms Up? I think you are. I think you are. What do you have to, you have something to say to them? Okay. Um, <laughs> in this episode, uh, we leave Pittsburgh, but not before sharing some backstage shenanigans with y'all. And then we head over to St. Louis, um, to the beautiful, fabulous Fox Theater. I'm going to show you all over uh, the Fox Theater because it's one of the most beautiful theaters around. Um, we'll show you around St. Louis, some St. Louis staples. And uh, it looks like St. Louis is going to be broken up into two episodes because there's just too much fun to be had. Also in this week's episode of Bottoms Up, I will finally ask Josh Grizzetti some of those long-awaited Twitter questions. All right, places for our final show at the Benedum Center in Pittsburgh. Let's do this. Hey guys, happy last show in Pittsburgh. Happy oh. last show in Pittsburgh. Hey. Happy, happy last, last show. show. Guys, hey, how are you? Ready for the last wow. Pittsburgh show? No, no, I want to stay here for the rest of my life. <laughs> Ready to go, Lucy? Yes, and ready for my weekly vibe. Let's do this. I'm going to find out if one of the dressers will take the camera from me during the opening number so I can film some stuff. <laughs> They're applauding for House to Half. This is going to be a good crowd. <laughs> oh my god. Guys, yes. you have to go out. There's 15 people out here. It's show fans. I'm not ready. This is another sold out night in Pittsburgh. this time to a science. So you can watch a little bit of the curtain coming up and then we're gonna cheat our way into the theater unit. Ready? Ready? We're gonna have to go very soon. Oh my God. Ready? Get out of here, go! Oh, that was close, the curtain was coming up. Oh, guys, this is fun. So the crew is sometimes seen. So they put them in some Renaissance wear. Yeah, yeah. Here they come. Okay, so during the opening number, you guys caught a little glimpse into the fact that we can see places rack two. Um, you can see Nick, who plays the minstrel, silhouette from the spotlight on the drop as he sings. There's a game that Ralph, one of our ensemble members, plays for Act Two, where he tries to shadow his shadow. Let me show you what I'm talking about. has become our tradition. Uh, before we leave Pittsburgh, I want to give you a glimpse at our view at the beautiful Benedum Center. Take a look. Okay, so people were asking if we stage door around at different cities. Yes, we did. The reason that I decided to do this for the vlog right now is because this little sweetheart just said that she was a big fan of the vlog. Hi. <laughs> What's your name? Abigail. Abigail. Abigail also has one of Squig's um, Lights of Broadway cards. Look, she had me sign my trading card. It was nice to meet you, Abigail. It was nice to meet you. Thanks. Too. We love you, Pittsburgh. <laughs> awesome. 
If you are in St. Louis, odds are before you leave, you will have had a toasted ravioli. Come on now. That's my jam. That's my jam. Okay, so what makes St. Louis style pizza St. Louis style? It's got really thin, really crispy crusts. So Maggie and I got black olives, mushrooms, and sausage. Come on now. Let's do this. The fabulous fox. Hello, old friend. Every now and then, you get to play a theater, and it's a little overwhelming. This is one of them. The fabulous fox in St. Louis looks like something out of Indiana Jones. Come on. This is ridiculous. I also love the elephant theme, so on the rug, they've got elephants, and then if you look on the top of the proscenium, so awesome. Come on, the detail in this place. Simba, everything the light touches is our kingdom. A king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. They have this amazing hallway where they list all of the shows that played here over the years. And I just found, let's see, 2006, 2007, 2008. Who's that smiley guy? Okay, this is one of the most fun things about going to these amazing old roadhouses, is that when I was here in 2008, we painted, my wife and I painted our mural of Avenue Q. Um, and now you get to go find it and visit it. I have footage of us painting it that I'm gonna give you so you can time warp back nine years and see childhood Rob and Maggie painting our mural. Ready? Orange fur leading to our mural. And then on the stairs, we had. That's so crazy! That's nine years old. We did this on ladders. There's my signature. And where's Maggie? Maggie's by the yellow bear with the part that she played. Um, Rob never lets me play with his toys, so um, <clears throat> while he's on stage, I'm stealing his camera. Have you seen his dressing room, by the way, here at the Fox in St. Louis? Just, just uh, look at this. I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that um, Angela Lansbury's mother died in this room. <laughs> I couldn't even, I couldn't even get it out. <clears throat> um, love you, Rob. Don't leave your toys sitting around where others can find them. Look at those, can you see the doors? Look, the elevator's right there. I'm gonna see, your, I'm gonna walk in and play with your things. Now I'm gonna take a picture um, of myself on your phone. Ooh, actually, that's his cat, Nico. Thank God it wasn't like a picture of something way inappropriate. Um, you can just, you can go into anybody's phone and just start taking pictures of yourself. I do it all the time. Let's just do this here. He's gonna appreciate that. This is Sabotage. He's in the middle of getting ready for the show. But I just decided to come in here and play rapid fire Twitter questions. But I down to do do down with Josh Grizzetti. Um, here's my favorite one that you've been wanting to know for a while. At McNeely Mary. McNeely Mary. Can you guess what her name is in real life? Mary McNeely? Good. Um, I can't wait to see you all in Houston. Thanks, Mary McNeely. We'll see you in Houston. Ask Josh What's your name? It is Josh, J-O-S-H. Yeah. Uh, G-R-I-S-E-T-T, -T, Grisetti. Got it. Thank you. <clears throat> what it was like to work with a legend like Sierra Vargas. <laughs> Hashtag bottoms up, tomato. <laughs> what was it like, Josh? 
Well, um, yeah, get in here. Get no, no, no. In here. I'm my microphone is right under oh, the good. camera. Oh, um, good. So I'm going to be putting... Um, uh, first of all, I've worked with a lot of legends. Yes. Um, I mean, we're talking Neil Simon, Hal Prince, uh, Carl Reiner, Come on. Um, Susan Stroman, Rob McClure. But the biggest <laughs> one of all, I think, is Sierra Vargas. I mean... Yeah. Um, it's, it's inspiring to work with, uh, with a legend like that. Um, but in all seriousness, she is... Not only is she obviously stupidly talented, yeah. but she's also, much like McClure here, it also uh, just one of the most genuine people, like inspiring. I look at both you and she, actually, Rob, and think, God, I, I should be a better person. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that has nothing to do with the arts and the talent and all that. That's a whole other thing, but Aww. just humanity. I love that part of it. I love you. I love you. I really do love this guy. <laughs> I need an explanation on one thing, Josh. My snowy world, at my snowy world, hi. Um, wants to know if she can have a little bit more unmotivated winking. I need to, I don't know what this is. Okay. Oh, well, uh, I don't even know who started it. I think Sierra started it okay. on the It Should Have Been You vlogs that okay. we did for Broadway.com. Um, I can't, I can't remember, but the game was, it, it started off as basically winking in inappropriate moments. Like it was a joke backstage to be, to say something. Um, that doesn't deserve a wink, but when you put a wink on it, it suddenly becomes really weird. Like, um, okay. like, like well, I, it could be anything. Like, <laughs> hey, I noticed you had a, a little tickle in your throat during that song today. <laughs> it immediately, it you're like, does. Wait, what does the wink mean? Yeah. I, I thought I knew what you were saying, but now I'm <laughs> confused. And so it, it evolved out of there into un, unmotivated winking, which was an acting exercise where you have to wink in inappropriate moments. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. So that was basically it. And then we went through all like, you know, comedy, tragedy, fear, anger, like whatever you had to put, Oh my God. Put a wink in it. But I think if we're going to do it at some point, we should go through, what we never did was actually do dialogue from the show oh, that's with forced good. winking. I think if we're going to, if it's going to continue to evolve, now it should go into right. actual acting exercise. Let's do it. I'm in. Um, Let's uh, try it on stage tonight at the Fox. <laughs> One more. Um, at HG Shenanigans, Haley. Hi, Haley. Haley. Um, you've been lucky enough to work with all the Shakespeare's. The favorite thing about each one. Oh boy, rapid fire. Good. Christian Borel, balls. And I don't mean literal balls. I mean professional balls. The guy makes choices that you're just like, you are so freaking brave. I don't know how you just go for it. Balls. Um, Will Chase. He's a goober. He's a goofball. He's fearless. I loved how silly he was. He had a sense of play that I admired. Um, Ryan Vandenboom, who was a cover, that boy can dance. So when he went on, the bard was like Justin Timberlake. Like, it was really hot. Good one, yeah. Alex Pevick, uh, the other uh, understudy, um, that boy can sing. <laughs> Willpower had stupid notes in it. Alex Pevick has one of the most extraordinary voices I've ever heard. Um, who was his other cover? Eric Scotto. I used to joke that when Eric Scotto was on for Shakespeare, the role of Shakespeare would be played by hair and hands. The guy is the most, like, he somehow is giving, like, this crazy broad performance while still, like, totally getting it. Like, Shakespeare can be eccentric and weird and awesome, and Eric, like, was fearless in yeah. his, like, sort of, and, and I, who wouldn't want to see his hair? Just playing Shakespeare. Um, and then, uh, who else? And then Adam. Adam, like, we have, like, this soft spot for Adam because we'll catch ourselves having moments where we're like, that's Adam Pascal. Like, you kind of forget because he's so chill and down to earth and, like, grounded and soft-spoken. And then he gets up there and sings, and we all know his voice. We've known it since we were 13 and we're listening to songs about AIDS. Um, but... <laughs> True story. True story. <laughs> but every now and then you catch yourself and you're like, that's Adam Pascal in a fake beard. Um, what is my life right now? <laughs> um, but, but Adam's also a sweetheart. He's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Um, but that wraps up all the Shakespeare. And right? that's an amazing summation of all of those. Boom. Well done. We love you. I'll, do, I'll answer more questions later, but you guys need more Josh Grisetti in your life, so I'll make sure to deliver that. So that's it for episode three of Bottoms Up here in St. Louis. Um, I hope you're having fun. Um, 
Continue to tweet us at Broadwaycom, at Rob McClure, hashtag bottoms up. Anything you want to see and any questions you might have. I'm still going to interview some cast members, so get all those questions ready because I'm going to sit down with everybody eventually uh, and make sure to ask them all of your Twitter questions. So send us anything you'd like to see because uh, we love hearing from you. But in the meantime, we're going to enjoy the beautiful St. Louis. Come on. That's the view from our hotel room. I mean, it doesn't get more St. Louis than that. I love it. We'll see you next time on Bottoms Up. Mama.